Hi, this is Savannah from Chicken Soup for the Truth or Soul 2. And today I'm going to be talking about the classic Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. A little something that I noticed. Maybe someone's noticed before and they may have shrugged it off. But I'm going to call it out. So, I was looking at the Wikipedia page for the novel, for the movie interpretation of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. Excuse me, now here's the photo. I just want you to see how weird that is. Fake grin on the child's face while someone is perched on his shoulder with a tall hat and cane. That's not creepy. While there's a bite taken out of a chocolate bar, notice the packaging. Looks like horns on the end, a mustache upside down. Now, nothing these people do is on accident. That being said... Um, there were unused chapters of the book, and I found it interesting, one of these, the, the most, the most interesting I found, besides the fact that they took one of the chapters and put it in scary stories that'll make you scream, because that's what a child needs in their life, scary story books, um, the third one down from the bottom, the, sorry, the fourth one, let's move a little further, the children's delight room, the children's delight room, what do you think that means? And they're talking about exiting, and they're in a chocolate factory. Poop! Exiting the body. Children's delight room? Were they talking about eating feces? Oh, man. This is a trip. I'm surprised that the children weren't depicted as naked in the book as well. Eight kids going to a factory with a grown man obsessed with chocolate, and he's not talking about chocolate. It's a wonder any of them made it out. Look at this description of the the warming candy room. Also, in 2014, Vanity Fair published a plot summary of the warming candy room, wherein three boys eat too many warming candies and end up Bursting with heat. Bursting with heat. What does that sound like? Warming candies. So what else is warm? Bursting with heat. It's like... What? Unbelievable. Next. The main page... For Charlie and Chalked Factory, I saw some of the adaptations besides the movies, uh, as a, as in a theme park ride, says that, uh, on April 1st, 2006, the British theme park Alton Towers opened a family attraction themed around the story. The ride featured a boat section where guests travel around the chocolate factory in bright pink boats. I can't remember whether or not there are bright pink boats in the movie. But what does that mean? Pink boats? Pink. Adrenochrome. Pink. Hot pink. Adrenochrome. If you want to know more about that, there's a lot of great videos on Enter the Stars channel. Enter the Stars and Reloaded channel as well. 
that is completely exposed by now. Adrenochrome is the drug in which they extract from the child's uh, adrenal gland, pineal gland rather, when they're at the utmost terror. terror. And um, just think what was found on Anthony Weiner's computer and what they were doing to the child, how they, you know, the things that they do so that they can get the highest of the high. And it is the highest of the high, apparently. And it keep it's a it's a it's a youth nectar. Keep them looking young. So, moving on to the third reference. Well, I just wanted to talk about this movie, and one little fact that I that I learned was the little boy that was in this movie. He never acted ever again. The little boy who was in this original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. He never acted ever again. These cryptos tore that kid to pieces. Hmm. He won't talk about it. It's kind of like the girl who was in Matilda, although she did write an article about it, and I can't find that I had saved it. And she exposed everything. And the, the, the article may as well have been under a pile of rubble. I'm not even sure how I found it. She was talking about everything that went on on the set of... Matilda. It was the least pleasant filming experience. So, this child went through absolute hell for uh, our entertainment and that music and everything so whimsical and woohoo! Let's come and see, come away with me, world of imagination, and look inside. We'll find a um, big brown river of poo. Unbelievable, right? Because it's not like we could ever imagine. Then the Candyman reference, and, you know, probably referencing the devil, I mean. And, of course, Sammy Davis Jr. had had to uh, make it a big hit, that Satanist, anyway. Last reference is the video game from 1985. Does that look, just by the cover, does that look like you want to come away with him? It looks like the child's holding an apple, or there's, like, apple trees in back of him. What does that look like? And the wizard-looking guy with the bow tie, circus person, has a cane with a ball on top. Where does that look familiar? Hmm? Baphomet statue? And look, one arm's going up and one arm's going down. So I don't think you want to play that game. And if you did, then... Well, I'd like to know about it, but... Wow, he goes into a 43-room chocolate factory. Wow, that sounds like a nightmare on its own. I don't think I want to play that, but... Um, if anybody did, and it was fun. I'm sure that was on purpose, because... Yeah, I don't even know, but this is blowing my mind. I hope that Roald Dahl is happy in his grave now, knowing that he's not only, you know, pushing the sugar thing, because that took off, too, around that time. Last time they had a good chocolate candy bar was when that movie came out, because after that, that's when they started to put GMOs in the food. Excuse me, but... Yeah, I'm just keeping it 100. Um, this is something sort of out of touch, out of time for me. I'm only 23, so I don't, I wasn't around for any of this. So my opinion is as good as anything. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty meaningless. But I just wanted to speak my piece on that, and um, thank you for watching very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, and God bless you in Jesus Christ's name.